But why don't we just shoot our trash directly into the sun? You just need to take a rocket, fill it with garbage and launch it straight at our star. Simple, right? Guys, like the idea of throwing our trash into volcanoes, the notion of sending it to the sun has also come up over and over again. Obviously, it's a completely crazy idea, perhaps even crazier than the original one, but in this video, we're going to try to figure out why shooting garbage directly into the sun just wouldn't work. Not now, and probably not even in the distant future. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers, manually translated into English, but, but, dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. Launch pads. Well, we simply don't have enough launch pads. If I want to send a rocket full of trash into the sun, the first thing I have to do is gather up all the garbage and send it over to the nearest rocket. You won't find a launch pad around every corner. In fact, there are currently no active ones in Italy at all. Right off the bat, you can see that this kind of solution couldn't possibly work, at least not in our country. Just for fun, let's imagine a situation in which we did have enough launch pads conveniently located all throughout the national territory. At that point, how many rockets would we need? Let's take, for instance, the SpaceX Falcon Heavy, which is pretty much the biggest and most powerful rocket in operation right now. Let's say it could transport about 10 tons of trash. So if we take this as a reference, then we'd need about 200 million Falcon Heavy launches a year to get rid of all the waste. And I'm not talking about all the waste that the world has ever produced in its history, no. I'm talking about the trash produced in just one year worldwide, given that the average annual amount produced globally fluctuates around 2.01 billion tons. Just to give you an idea, the number of launches carried out across the whole space sector globally currently stands at about 140 to 150 a year, and we'd need to do 200 million. It's clear that's out of the question. There simply aren't enough rockets. Not to mention the pollution that this incredible level of activity would produce, and it would be an absolutely colossal amount. I know, I know, guys, we're just talking hypothetically for fun. Let's take a light-hearted approach to it. We can have some fun and a few laughs. Besides the environmental and logistical problems, another big issue to consider is the cost. A Falcon Heavy might cost less than other types of rockets do, but we're still talking about around $100 million for each launch. If we multiply this number by 200 million, the number of launches we'd need every year, we get a total cost of 20 quadrillion dollars. Over 230 times the entire global GDP. And all this is just to dispose of a single year's trash. Let's keep going. Let's take this further. Let's just say we're ready to shoot for the sun. How exactly do you launch something into the sun? Think about it. The Earth orbits around the sun at about 107,000 kilometers an hour. Everything on Earth moves at the same speed, including our hypothetical rockets aimed directly at the Sun. Even if we aimed a rocket at the Sun and shot it towards the Sun, it obviously wouldn't actually crash into the Sun. Why? Because it wouldn't go in a straight line, because it too would be influenced by the orbital motion, and its trajectory would be deviated, causing it to obviously miss the target. The only way to make the rocket hit the sun would be to slow the rocket down, meaning it'd pretty much have to work against its orbital motion to cancel out those 100,000 plus kilometers per hour. To pull this off, we'd need an enormous amount of fuel, and currently no rocket is big enough or has a big enough storage tank to do the job. There's actually another trick that could be used to slow the rocket down, using other planets. By traveling around the other planets in the solar system, our rocket could lose enough speed to end up in the sun. Just as we use orbits to accelerate, well, we can also use them to do the very opposite, meaning that if we travel in the opposite direction, it will have a braking effect. This is exactly what the probes that are sent to study the sun up close do, like the Parker Solar Probe or indeed the Solar Orbiter. Anyway, even taking this possibility into account, the trajectory would not only become super complicated, but it would also necessitate a huge quantity of fuel. And then there's another thing that shouldn't be overlooked, which is that not all launches go according to plan. Even if it were possible for us to actually make it to the sun, sometimes launches fail. In the worst case scenario, a rocket explodes. Can you imagine a rocket full of tons of waste, maybe chemical or even nuclear waste, exploding in the sky? Sure, the probability that a single launch will fail is thankfully low. But if you think about it, there would be so many launches, 200 million of them, 
that there'd almost be the mathematical certainty that occasionally something would go wrong. The most reliable rockets in history are the Russian Soyuz rockets, with a success rate of 97% over more than 1,000 launches. This means, statistically speaking, that 3% of those famous 200 million plus launches would end badly. 3% might not seem like much, but with 200 million launches, that's 6 million failures. This means potentially tens and tens of millions of tons of waste could be released into the atmosphere and into the oceans every year. Okay, so this video is emphatically and intentionally lighthearted, but in my view, there's an interesting serious aspect to it as well, and that is that when we don't know certain things, we tend to oversimplify them in our minds. What I mean is that in our heads, sometimes we simplify things to such an extreme extent that even monstrously complex things seem easy. This isn't just the case for topics like putting trash into volcanoes, space or the sun, but also for current issues, energy issues and economic issues. How often do we hear comments like these people don't do anything right? For our energy needs, we should only use solar panels. Well, this oversimplification is typical of someone who doesn't understand the complex energy world. The moral of the story is that before oversimplifying an issue, it might be a good idea to consider the topic's complexity. As always, thanks so much for watching till the end. See you again soon for the next video right here on Geopop Everyday Science. Bye.